Greetings, my fellow freaks and weirdos. I'm Tom, and welcome to Monster Gab, where we love to talk about horror. And in today's episode, I'd like to ask you a question. Why is it that some people just aren't scared of horror films? Well, I believe there are two answers to this question. The first answer is, some people just have the beating heart of a fearless warrior, and they're scared of nothing. That's totally fine, guys. If horror films don't scare you, it really doesn't matter, providing that you are still enjoying them, and that's the important thing. However, I do feel like you are missing out a little bit, because part of the fun of watching horror films can be the scare factor. But then maybe you fit into this next category, because the second reason I believe that people aren't scared of horror films is because they're not watching them properly. Some of you may be thinking, well, come on, Tom, how else do you watch a film? You select the one you want to watch, you press play, you sit back and relax, surely? Well, kind of, but it's a little bit different with horror. Admittedly, not all horror films are in fact scary, especially the old classic ones that I love to watch, but the ones that are usually depend on two major factors, tension and atmosphere, along with a few jump scares now and then. <laughs> But then I believe as an audience member that you cannot rely on a movie alone to provide these certain aspects. It's your responsibility to add your own tension and atmosphere into the room where you are watching said film. There is also a responsibility not to kill that tension and atmosphere, and if you follow these next few steps that I'm about to tell you, then I can assure you that your viewing pleasure will be much scarier in the future. Now, before I tell you a list of rules and rituals, just bear in mind that this is only advisory and literally just my opinion. You don't have to abide by anything I say or agree with me. And if you get angry, by all means, leave it in the comment section below. But I do tend to find that most other horror fans do agree with this opinion. And I thought I'd share it with you guys so that you get the best horror experience that you possibly can. If you want films to scare you, I believe you have to follow this small set of rules. Firstly, all horror films must be watched at night with the lights out. In fact, you've got to make it as dark as possible so that you literally cannot see your own hand in front of your face. We human beings go into a different state of mind when we're in the dark and that really does help with the tension and atmosphere that I mentioned earlier. Not to mention that a lot of people are scared of the dark anyway and that just adds to the fear factor. Watching films in the day just isn't going to cut it, especially horror films. But I don't just mean dark, guys. I mean as dark as possible. Make it pitch black. Cover any areas where light may be coming into the room. The second rule that I would advise is to turn the volume up fairly loud on the movie you're watching. Now, the reason for this is because, going back to the tension and atmosphere again, a lot of that is created by the sound and the music in the film, but mostly from the silent moments. And the only way you're really going to experience those silent moments is when the volume absolutely drops within the movie. If you're watching a movie at a very quiet volume, you are not going to feel that effect when everything goes silent. Not to mention that if the movie's got a really good jump scare in it, then the audio is going to hit you like a freight train. Now, I know there are some people out there that just don't like jump scares, but at the end of the day, it really does go hand in hand with tension and atmosphere and helps with the scare factor of a movie. But then the audio isn't just there for jump scares. Sometimes there's some really scary music or there may be something going on in the background. And again, it just increases that kind of fear factor. Now, not everyone has the luxury of a surround sound system or a sound bar with a subwoofer, but if you do have these, I highly recommend that you use them. It will not only increase the audio, but the emotion that's behind it too. Maybe your TV speakers are good enough, but seriously, if you can, try and connect it to some kind of sound system, even if it's just a hi-fi or some bookshelf speakers. Personally, I think the sound is very, very important when it comes to the scare factor of a movie, so take it seriously, guys. Oh, wow, that was a bit lectury, wasn't it? Take it seriously, guys. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to help. Another factor that I consider to be quite important is that you have to watch the movie all the way through without pausing or rewinding any parts of the movie. Now, if you have a weak bladder, I suppose that can't be helped. But seriously, guys, if you can, get your toilet issues out the way before the film. The reasoning behind this is because every time you pause a movie or rewind it, you kill the momentum and therefore you are killing the tension and atmosphere. Now, I know you can always rewind back and go to a part that you were watching and try and get back into it. But honestly, it's much better to just watch it all the way through. Be a part of the movie and get completely lost in its environment. 
So it appears that the two words that I love using in this video so far are tension and atmosphere, but they are an important factor. And the thing that really does kill the tension and atmosphere is distraction. It's got to be said, guys, the biggest distraction in today's society has got to be the phone. Switch the damn thing off. I mean, come on, guys, how long is a film? Two hours max? Some are a bit longer, but most horror films are about two hours. It's not important enough. The world can wait. Enjoy the movie. In our house, whenever we're watching a horror movie, in fact, any movie, it's a rule that phones have to be switched off. I don't even keep my phone on me. I leave it upstairs in the bedroom. But guys, if you're going to have your phone on you and you're watching a film with me, I'm going to kick you out the house. One of my biggest pet hates is when I log onto Facebook and I see someone post something like, hey, I'm halfway through the latest Conjuring movie. I'm really enjoying it so far. What do you guys think? And I always reply with something like, I think you should log off social media and watch the damn film. And I don't mean putting it on silent or dimming the light, guys. I mean switch it off. It's a distraction, and I think it goes without saying that if there are other people in the room, then there's just no talking allowed. You don't talk during a movie. You watch a movie. You talk afterwards. If anyone is in the room that's not interested in the film, they got to leave. Simple as that. If anybody in the room starts giggling or messing about or they've got a short attention span, then I'm sorry, they've got to leave. And you know what? It's probably best not to have pets in the room too. Or kids, at that matter. Oh, I can already see the angry comments. <laughs> and with that being said, guys, the fewer people in the room, the better. Because the more people there are, the more noise there's going to be, because people do fidget and move around. I know in the cinema that can't really be helped, but do you know, in the last few years, my cinema experiences have not been great. I've actually been put off. There's too many people messing about, playing with their phones or chatting or getting up and... It, again, ruins the, the tension and atmosphere, but it, it just ruins the movie for me and I've stopped going to the cinema. So my attitude is when I watch a film, I tend to just watch it either with my wife or my brother or both of them at the, at the most. Here is a rule that I think a lot of people will be up in arms about. You simply cannot eat or consume any type of food during a film. I'm sorry guys, but it's just such a distraction. You know, some food is really noisy, isn't it? You know, it could be really crunchy or the packet you're eating out of could be really rustly. And that's not fair on the person who says sitting next to you, but even for yourself, that's a distraction. But then there are some people who eat puddings or dessert or cereal or ice cream with a spoon and a bowl. And more often than not, they're looking into the bowl and not at the screen. Seriously, watch someone that's doing it. Watch someone that's eating out of a bowl and watch how often they are looking at the bowl and not at the screen. You could be missing something really important or something really scary or something just visually fantastic. Now, I have a feeling that some of you are going to come back to me and say that you are capable of multitasking, that you can use a phone and watch a film and still enjoy it, or that you can eat something and watch a film and still enjoy it. And, you know, I can do those things too, but it does actually distract you from what you are watching. I mean, it's the reason why you're not allowed to do such things when you're driving. You know, think about it. It is a distraction. It may only be a minor distraction, but that minor distraction is what's killing the tension and atmosphere. <laughs> I told you guys, them are two favorite words in this video. Something that I have noticed recently is a lot of people these days watch their movies with subtitles on. Now, unless you are hard of hearing or you have some kind of disability or ailment that requires subtitles, then cut that habit out, guys. Subtitles are a distraction. Now, that's totally understandable if, say, the movie's in a different language. I get that. It can't be helped. But in most cases, I find people are doing it because they've got the volume down low. Going back to what I said before, that's no way to watch a horror movie. It's You're just not going to find it scary with the volume low and the subtitles on. Not to mention, I remember seeing a horror movie once in the cinema where they had subtitles on because it was a special viewing for those who were hard of hearing. And look, guys, I get it. Everyone's entitled to be able to enjoy themselves and watch a film. I'm not complaining at that. But there was a jump scare moment and it literally said bang on the screen about two seconds before there was a loud bang and nobody jumped because nobody felt it. Well, maybe it's because a lot of the people in the audience were deaf, but I mean, it just it absolutely killed that suspense that it was trying to build up. OK, so I have one more rule, guys, before you pummel me in the comments section below. Well, that rule is to take a break from horror once in a while. Now, I know that sounds like an absolute sin, especially for us horror fans, but, you know, there is too much of a good thing, and you can get immune to horror films, so much so that they just don't have an effect on you anymore. 
Now, for me personally, and you guys don't have to follow this, of course, but I try not to watch the big scary films during the summer. I'll still watch horror during the summer, but it'll be the old classics that I, you know, I love. Um, but I try not to watch the scary ones until it gets really, really dark. Um, a lot of that is because in the summer I, I don't have uh, blackout curtains, so a lot of the sunlight still comes through. And going back to what I said before, you know, I think it's important to make the room as dark as possible. So I save them. And because of that, I feel like I enjoy them even more. I look forward to them. And then when it does get dark and it becomes like autumn or winter, I really do get my horror fix. And, you know, I build up that kind of, you know, that scare factor. Now, folks, as I mentioned earlier, all of these rules are just my opinion. You don't have to follow them and you sure as hell don't have to share them. And, you know, I'm not trying to offend anybody out there. You know, if you have your own way of watching a horror film, as long as you're enjoying it, that's all that really matters. And listen, I totally understand that we live in a real world. You know, some people can't abide by these rules because, you know, maybe you have children. Maybe you have a, a newborn baby and you have to have a baby monitor on. That's just the way it is. Maybe you have a dog that just won't stay out the living room and won't stop jumping on the furniture. You know, perhaps you have a really busy working life and therefore you don't have much time to watch TV and cook a meal. And so you have to eat in front of the, the television. It's just the way it is. Maybe you have to to split a film in half because you just cannot stay awake or maybe you have a weak bladder or maybe you have really grumpy neighbors that keep banging on the wall and telling you to turn the tv down guys i totally get it but for those of you that aren't benefiting from the true experience of watching horror films and not getting the scare factor that, that the film is trying to deliver i just thought it was important to share how i watch a film and maybe you can take something from it i don't know anyway what do you guys think do you agree with the things i've said or do you disagree do you have some rituals of your own that you do whilst watching movies let me know in the comment section one thing i will say about horror films though guys is i find with most modern films especially the really kind of the ones that are considered scary is it's all about that first time watch so try not to ruin that experience because when you watch it for the second time you know where all the scary parts are you know to get that true experience really you know try and make it the best experience you possibly can because the second time round is never quite the same Again, it's just my opinion, folks, but by all means, tell me where to go down the bottom there. You know what to do. <laughs> Is that it then? Are we finished? Right, let's do our bit then. Thank you very much, guys, and until next time. I don't know who they are, but if you don't subscribe, they will get you. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new video here on Monster Gab. Be sure to like the video if you did indeed like it. Maybe some of you are going to leave a little dislike, but whatever. And leave a comment below. Share with your friends. Thanks very much. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.